Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. Uh, my name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna go over uh, information on Twitter. I like going over this, seeing other people's viewpoints. Uh, I especially like looking at some of the charts that people post up. I also posted up some of my own charts and uh, we'll go over them during this one and give you my financial opinions with it. So let's go in here. Um, if you wanna follow me, it's at finding underscore finance. Uh, if you wanna follow. So Patrick's got here, he's got expecting NASDAQ and Bitcoin to lose over 90% of their value priced in silver. And that's what the ratio uh, is so important. So if we were to look at this one, uh, what he's got is he's got the NASDAQ price divided by the silver price. So NASDAQ outperforms on the way up. On the way down, uh, silver outperforms. And it's a combination of silver going up and the nasdaq going down it's the combination of those two things and he's got we'll call it a bearish in the pink area it's bearish for nasdaq bullish for silver and if you notice we are entering another bullish time frame for silver and the target he's got is for 47 to 1 and we're up at <laughs> we are still at maybe 500 to one or so. And you can also see there's there's this kind of a, a move higher. It goes into the valley of despair. You get a double bottom and then it breaks back up and looks like we're breaking back down into that valley of despair that we normally see. So that'd be positive for silver. Now I posted these up. This is oil service companies. Uh, this is also ratio charts. Uh, I use the ETF OIH. Uh, OIH. So I've got the XOP, which is the oil and gas exploration production companies versus the energy service companies. We've had this nice, strong uptrend, and we're starting to break to the downside where the energy service companies may outperform the exploration production companies we've had a pretty good sell-off here uh very strong selling pressure and that looks like it could continue to the downside where energy service companies outperform exploration production companies we also have oih versus moo moves another etf it's an agra business etf massive massive falling wedge pattern that we've broken out of and we're going sideways uh, so lots of downside momentum where Mu was outperforming. Now we're going sideways, and I think we're going to see a move to the upside where OIH could potentially outperform. We've got OIH versus Rare Earth Metals ETF, another one that was in a strong downtrend. We bunched all up, broke to the upside, and I think we are just starting a new uptrend. So step one is to break the downtrend, which is here. Step two is to create a higher low. Step three is to break the higher high, and we've done all of that. So we are in a new uptrend where the energy service companies should outperform Rare Earth Metals ETF. And then the last one is URNM versus OIH. And we could see an outperformance of energy service companies come all the way down to the bottom here, point one, where energy service companies outperform. We've seen lots of selling pressure on the right-hand side or outperformance of OIH, and I think that could still potentially continue for a short while. So that's OIH. OIH looks really good, the energy service companies, and that is where I would be looking for potential investments. I still like XOP as well. I like both of them. Uh, here's what it says. I agree with uh, Tavi Costa. Uh, it, it has also happened back in the post-depression World War II, and we, we're ta he's talking about the three wave of inflation. You get this one wave, second wave, third wave. One wave, two wave, third wave. Now, they're speculating on what potentially could happen going forward, where we still get three waves of inflation and what that could potentially look like. And... We've seen in history the three waves of inflation, and maybe it's coming again. We just finished our first wave. We'll probably see a decline in the inflation rate. That does not mean that the money supply is deflationary. 
Uh, what this means is that the rate of growth of inflation goes down. It does not mean deflation. It means disinflation or the inflation rate isn't as much. And this is what he was referring to. Uh, he says, as inflation decelerates, investors will think it's the end of it. Not my view. This is a structural problem caused by secular forces, wage growth, commodity shortages, reckless fiscal spending, deglobalization. Inflation develops through waves. We just saw the first one. And I've talked about the first one and potentially a bear trap. Uh, it's the first wave of inflation, bear trap. We're somewhere in this general vicinity. Second wave, and then the third wave. We've seen also stocks move in these three waves. Uh, there's a bunch of different companies uh, that create these three waves. You can even create the three waves, come back down, and restart a new cycle very quickly, which is possible. I'm not saying it's going to happen this time. I'm just saying I've seen it in stocks. Uh, here's silver. It says what silver will do um, open breakout here when measured against inflation is beyond me. Uh, so he's got silver versus the consumer price index. We've got the three waves, first wave, second wave, third wave, and then we come on back. Maybe this is the first wave, we're going to get a big second wave, and maybe we get a big third wave. Something on the lines of that, if 2000 is your first point. Uh, we could also see three distinct waves coming on up, but we're right at this we'll call it point where we could break out against consumer price index, silver that is. So that's interesting. Uh, it says platinum is coming really strong, imminent breakout to massive upside move. Uh, I like this chart. We're basically riding and grinding this line higher all the way up to another resistance line. So we've got the support line, we've got the resistance line, hopefully we can break to the upside. We have strong uh, resistance at this 1043 level. If you look, go across, you can see how many times we've traded going across and used it as support going in history. It's a strong resistance. It's, the, the resistance is against us. <laughs> uh, platinum bar and coin demand is expected to jump 50% in 2023. World Platinum Investment Council. That's crazy, 50%. It uh, looks like we were jumping, at least myself, uh, I kind of jump when everyone else is not really looking at it. That's where you get the best prices. But um, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, here's from John Burns. It says, home prices are falling even though buyers still outnumber sellers in most areas. Per 1,000 plus resale um, agents were surveyed in November. I interpret this to mean there are plenty of buyers. They just want to need a better deal. And this is what it looks like. Buyers outnumber the sellers. Buyers are outnumbering the sellers dramatically in 21, 22. They've come back down, but they still outnumber because the, the yellow buyers roughly equal sellers. Buyers outnumber sellers and sellers outnumber buyers. So there's overall, the buyers outnumber the sellers at this time. They just need better pricing, better affordability, I guess. Uh, it says OPEC plus weekly crude exports are down to a three month low as key members execute on their production cuts and Kuwait's El Zawar refinery hits full stride. With loss of market share no longer a concern, watch for OPEC plus to further strengthen their control on oil markets in 2023. And this is their production here, and you can see it's down quite a bit, uh, heading a little bit lower there. Oh, I, I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, I do follow Jordan Peterson. It says This is from Jordan Peterson. He, he posted this a while back in, in January of 13. He said, I firmly expect oil to hit $300 a barrel before this is over. And that might be optimistic. The writing is on the wall. And th he's referring to some of these areas that are basically banning, drilling, and doing all this stuff with oil. Uh, here's Gergen. He says, crude oil... Release from the Strategic Petroleum Reserve was 4.7 million barrels for the week ending December 9th, 2022. 168 million barrels done, 12.3 million barrels to go. Year-to-date release from the SPR stands at 211.4 million barrels or 616,000 barrels per day. That is what they're releasing. That is what they're using to get this price to come on down and hold everything together. 
Uh, I've got he's got Unreal. So this is the interest expense on public debt rose to seven hundred and sixty six billion over the past year, a record high. If it continues to increase at the current pace, it will soon be the largest line item in the federal budget, surpassing Social Security. And this is the interest expense going higher vertically with the interest rates. Now, we have to watch what interest rates do. If interest rates continue to be at an elevated level, we are going to see the interest expense balloon. And that's going to be inflationary because they're going to have to print money to cover this interest expense. They also have increasing expenses with Social Security. They've got increasing expenses with all those uh, obligations to the baby boomers. That is all inflationary because they they're going to have to cover it with money that they don't have. Uh, we've got silver has put in a clean breakout and back test against the NASDAQ. This is very strong evidence in support of a long-term bull market for precious metals. There's the NASDAQ coming on down and silver breaking out uh, of its downtrend line. This looks fantastic. It looks really good for silver to outperform that other asset. Now here's Dow to gold ratio heading to one. Uh, the chart analysis says it's very possible. Probable if the support line fails. Let's take a look. Uh, so here's our waves. This is a megaphone pattern up, down, up, down. It's getting larger. Uh, I should say it's getting larger and larger, the size of the movements. Higher highs, lower lows of this ratio. This ratio is projecting it to go down roughly at 20, 30 ish. And if we break out of this support line, out of this rising um, channel, we break to the downside, we could see a big old move down to maybe even one. I mean, we'll see where it goes, uh, but this is an outperformance of gold. And you can see this heading lower where gold should outperform the Dow Jones. Go precious metals against stocks. We've got home buyers and sellers are trying to make sense of a downturn that's full of contradictions. Demand is seized up, but supply is still low. Prices are sliding, but not plummeting. And no one can agree on what comes next. That's on the housing market. This is Dow, uh, this is gold to silver ratio. Now with a clear breakdown from its bear flag. Currently at 77, a break of the neckline around 60 gives us pretty compelling case that we see a head and shoulders measured move to 30. Shoulder, head, shoulder in this gold to silver ratio. Silver coming back to the neckline. The breakdown and a potential move to 30. Uh, we are at 76, which means that silver could outperform gold on over a two to one relationship as it goes higher. So coming on down, uh, this is copy. It says lift the lift all the oil you can. We're opening up. <laughs> um, that is the president of China. There, we've got. Uh, liquidity still matters. So if the Fed and ECB continue to shrink their balance sheets, there will be headwinds for stocks. And this is global liquidity. You can see they were shrinking their balance sheets. That's liquidity usually for stocks and bonds. Uh, it says consensus is building around declining shale productivity with rise dead energy showing sustained declines over the past 18 months. Along with heavy legacy shale declines, this double whammy is set to materially impact shale production in 2023. Pay attention when trends reverse. And this is your actual barrels per day of production. So this is US light tight oil, new production per well. This is per well on barrels per day. Up, 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 up. We came on back, we did a double top, and here we are heading back lower on your well productivity. This could spell trouble for the oil uh, shales, which means that when you're, when you're not getting as much oil from your wells, you're going after lower and lower quality wells. And eventually this will all peak out and will start to decline and go back down to uh, lower levels. Uh, Technology is fighting this, the way that they drill and, and technology and, and drilling 
So um, they're pulling out everything they can to get the most out of these wells. Uh, here's GDXJ weekly close. The GDXJ has now hammered in a textbook wave five bottom. The potential of a large head and shoulders bullish bottom reversal is less probable since the explosion out of the rare diamond bottom. Now a new bull market wave three advance. So we could see a pretty big move in GDX to the upside eventually. Uh, we may have a pullback here for creating an inverse shoulder head shoulder. We also see this pattern on the price of gold itself. So everything is aligning and GDXJ could be a potential good investment and maybe some of those junior mining companies. Uh, electric vehicle demand poses a challenge for copper supply with a 10 million metric ton deficit possible by 2035. Talks to three experts to learn what the future might hold. Says pressure on metals as energy transition ramps up. And they're talking about the copper supply deficit. It says, uh, hilarious, hedge funds were super short energy stocks near the bottom of quarter three and got their face ripped off beginning of quarter four. Same will happen with oil. Uh, a lot of people are short oil right now, and this is what gives you the fuel to really push the price higher. So we got a lot of, a lot of shorts in there. Uh, here's China is reopening. Uh, China says the flight volume of two airports in Beijing are expected to reach 70% of daily flights in the same period in 2019. On Sunday, the number of daily flights for the two airports, Beijing Capital International Airport, Beijing, increased by 63% than previous days, and trend keeps rising. And it's a growth rate hit 100% on Saturday and 169% on Monday. So they're really opening up, and they are traveling like heck. They're getting the heck out of their, their lockdowns. And I, I would suspect that oil demand from China, uh, as they open up, since they've been locked down for so long, will explode. Uh, here's Encore Energy, has been using a 215 area as support and give gave a nice wick this week. Uh, so this is the support line. It's been basically lower highs and then holding these lows. We do have what I consider to be a candlestick that's converted. We've got a large up candlestick, two small down candlesticks. It's converting into where I think we're going to head higher. Uh, it may it may take some time. It may move sideways for a little bit longer before breaking out, uh, but it is coming. It's looking a lot lot better. Uh, here's oil. It says we broke out of this 15 year wedge in 2021, and we are now only having the first major pullback. Very rarely is the top, you know, the first top, the top after a massive breakout. There's more to come for oil. A lot more. We had a false breakdown, the breakout, and we're just coming on back for the first one. Wave one, pull back somewhere in here. Wave three is going to be massive. That's your biggest leg is wave three, your longest and biggest wave. And this also fits the three waves. Uh, when when they, they, it comes in waves or stages, this is the first wave, pull back, third wave, pull back, fifth wave. So it's coming, guys. It is coming. It says these things mean nothing. We are just we just monitor the Costco hot dog price at the Fed. <laughs> Thought that was funny. That's what their consumer price index is. <laughs> it says investors just don't like energy. Period of end of story. It's extremely volatile with a lot of geopolitics surrounding it. So that's what I've got for today, guys. Um, that's what I see as bullish. Uh, energy service companies look bullish. Uh, a lot of you know silver looks bullish. A lot of precious metals look bullish, uh, and oil. Oil. We put the first wave in. We're putting that wave two, and then we'll hit wave three at some point. Uh, Come up in the future. I don't know when we're going to start it. We could have already started it. Hard to say. Uh, if you guys need help uh, navigating through these markets, definitely sign up for the findinghyphenvalue.com platinum membership, and uh, sign up to the you know subscribe to the channel. So thanks for for viewing. We'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.